population has grown more than the previous 150,000 years. That's unbelievable, right? And this puts an enormous amount of stress on, on natural resources, right? Now, why is that? Let's take water, for example, right? Two, did you know that 2.1 trillion gallons of clean water is lost in the U.S. every year? Isn't that crazy? I mean, water is the, one of the most precious resources on this planet, and yet this is how we handle it. Now, even though more than 70% of Earth is covered with water, less than 1% is actually available for, for human use. And even within that tiny fraction, 92% is for agriculture and industrial use. So, so for us, the consumers, we'll get only 0.08%. Right? That's how bad it is. And uh, what, about, what about the air we breathe? Right? 6.3 million people die every year due to air pollution. That's more than AIDS and malaria combined. Right? And it's, it's, it's getting worse every year. Factories being one of the you know, major reasons that this is happening. And <clears throat> now you, you may think that, hey, you know what? We have trees. Right? Trees kind of tend to counterbalance this, this effect. Uh, you know what humans did? We went after the forest too. Right? 50 million acres of forest cut down every year. And this deforestation continues to be a huge, huge problem, especially in the developing regions. Now, if you look at this, this trend, right, where this is heading, 84% uh, of, of, of our population lives in the de developing regions of the world. Right? I, I, lived in a develop I grew up in a developing country. Right? So not only have I seen this problem, I've actually lived the part. Right? And the, we, are, we are using up resources like way faster than, than the Earth can replenish every year. Now, this is called ecological debt. And at this speed, only 27% of the population can be supported with the current natural resources, right? So now this, this is it's a scary situation, right? If you go at the space, you're pretty much uh, done with the resources. And this, this difference between what Earth can produce and what uh, the speed at which we give back, that is called ecological debt, the stuff we take and don't give back. And if you put a dollar amount, on this, on this ecological debt, it, it ranges in like trillions of dollars. So, okay, so now we know the problem, right? We have huge problems. Now, what do we, how do we address these challenges? Because one of the main reasons is if you don't know that that stuff is happening, then you can't take care of it. There's a very famous saying that goes, if you can't measure something, you can't improve it, right? So you need to measure it in real time and then, then, know, then we can know what, we, what can be done. Now, let's, this is where the, the concept of Internet of Things comes into picture. Now, let's consider like a, like a water pipe or let's say like a, a, you know, a power plant. You, you cannot have a human go there every time to measure something, right? That, that's very inefficient. You need a device that can, that can constantly measure something and send it to the cloud. This way you can monitor it in real time. And this is what this is all about. The sensors, these, these devices can kind of wirelessly communicate to the cloud and they can send information about temperature, pressure, vibration, water flow, which can then be used to do a variety of things. This connected device ecosystem is called Internet of Things. The thing being the device that can talk to the cloud. Right, so now we now have a way of measuring stuff. Now what do we do with this data? This, this is just raw data. What do we do with it? All right. This is where we need artificial intelligence. Right. In order to extract wisdom from this raw data, we need artificial intelligence algorithms to do that. Now, artificial intelligence is, is a field of study of, that, that deals with creating intelligent machines. Right? Machines that can uh, perform tasks that require human intelligence. And this is actually based on, on a human brain. Right? Human brain is an amazing thing. Uh, we, we, it, it, it is, it's great at learning new things. It adapts really quickly. And it almost does it subconsciously. You don't even try. You just know when you see a car, it's a car. You don't need to. Somebody, you don't, somebody doesn't you know, tell you every time you see a new car. 
Now, researchers are trying to emulate the learning process of the human brain through artificial intelligence. Great. So now we, have to, we, we know how to collect the data, and we know how to use artificial intelligence to extract wisdom from it. Now, a couple of examples would, would include you know, robots that can walk, or, or cars that can drive themselves, or your smartphones that can understand what you are saying. It's, it's amazing. Great, so now let's see what can be done. We need a way to convert that wisdom into action, right? This is how we close the loop. There's a physical world, you measure it, you extract insights, and then you have to take some action, right? And this is where we need an actuator. For example, it can be like, hey, or how to automatically turn off a faucet, or how do we switch, switch on an engine? So you use that wisdom to take automatic action and you close the loop. And this, this is very useful in, in handling resources like water, uh, power, uh, and, uh, and, and many more things. Right, let's, take, let's take an example. Right? How do we use this framework to deal with something like water leakage? America has 1.2 million miles of pipes, water pipes. Right? That's more than enough to circle the Earth 48 times. That's a lot of pipes. Now, these pipes leak all the time because the average age of a pipe in the U.S. is 47 years, which means there are pipes that are 100 years old. Right? They're, they're old pipes, and replacing them is very, very expensive, which is why the only way to handle it is you install a bunch of sensors, and then those sensors send data about water flow, pressure, so on. And you use that data to predict leakage. So in this case, a very good indicator of leakage is the pressure data. So you install pressure sensor everywhere, and then that sensor sends data about pressure. And then AI, artificial intelligence, can use that data to predict where and when the leakage is happening. Now what about air pollution? Now, if you, if you look around the world, uh, it's, factories are like one of the biggest reasons why air is getting so polluted. So if you, if you want to measure the quality of, of air and then make sure you do something about it, you, you install like an air quality sensor. This sensor is wirelessly connected to the cloud. It sends data about quality of the air, and then which allows you to monitor it and then take automatic action, right? Agriculture. Now, farmers, they don't have access to all the modern uh, information, right? So by installing sensors and, and allowing them to access data about you know, uh, crop diseases or consumption trends or drought patterns, it will allow them to, to be more efficient and, and use that data to increase productivity and also reduce water usage, uh, energy bills, and so on because agriculture is the largest user of water. Like 70% of all water that's available for human use is, is, goes to agriculture. So by, by improving uh, their, their, their techniques, the, the way they work with data, it, it goes a long way in saving our natural resources. Now, this all looks very nice and rosy. Right? Like, well, why don't we just do it then? You know, we have the, the, the sensor infrastructure, we have artificial intelligence, so why don't we just go ahead and do it? The problem is that developing countries have budget constraints. Right? There's no infinite money. Right? They need to take care of basic things like food, water, transport. Once they set all of that up, then they can think about installing modern infrastructure, uh, using algorithms to do stuff. Right? And, and that's, why, that's why developing regions suffer, uh, or rather like face these problems way more than other countries, because their pipes are really, they're, they're basically their infrastructure is really old, and upgrading that is a very, very expensive process. Right. So if you, going forward, right, what can be done about this? What, what can we collectively do to make sure that we, we these conserve or rather save our natural resources. Right? It's a combination of these three things. Artificial intelligence to extract wisdom, internet of things to measure and then take action, and then human capital. Because in the end, we are doing all of this to improve the quality of life and also improve uh, the, uh, the Earth's natural resources. 
So by utilizing these three things in tandem, it will allow us to be very, very efficient and have a very meaningful impact. Artificial intelligence is actually a fantastic tool to solve problems. But, but we need to understand that a generic algorithm can't solve every single problem. We cannot expect it to do it. So once we understand that we need to constrain the problem so that artificial intelligence you know, almost looks like magic, that is when artificial intelligence can truly benefit humanity. Thank you.